Hi everyone, Mary Mitchell here. This is the board that I worked on. Uh, it's 30 by 30 Da Vinci um, cradled birch board, uh, two inches uh, deep. And this is the most important part you will need and it is a respirator. Please, please, please use this. It's so important. I can't stress that enough. Please read all the safety, all the safety precautions when you're using resin. Uh, I can't stress it enough, as I said. So here I go. I have mixed up my resin in a large bucket. I used the uh, resin calculator, how much I'll need on the, you can get them online. You know, you just put in the, the dimensions and it'll tell you how much you need. So I did that. And I wish I had mixed a little bit more, but it worked out fine. It really did. I didn't have a lot of runoff, and uh, it's always desirable not to not to have that and, and not to waste. So I divided my, once I had mixed it up, my resin, my two parts, I divided it up. Uh, I kept uh, some clear, uh, and, and I used four different other colors, uh, two colors three kinds of blue and a uh, iridescent white, like a pearl color. And I mixed them up into their cups and that's what I'm spreading out here. Now you see this board isn't blank because I've already resined it um, before with one coat and uh, of, of the various colors. And I also then painted over it and then I wet sanded some of the paint off. So I have some of the resin showing through, some of the paint still on top. So I have a, um, when I put this resin on, it'll be, give it even a, a more dimensional look. So this will be uh, the final coat I'm hoping. So as you can see, um, just, just, just laying it out there, uh, uh, top to bottom, dark to light. And once I have all those colors down, I'll take the clear and I'll mix that, uh, you know, in between throughout all the colors so that I can mix it, uh, blend them together. My, I may, if you see the white, it's awfully white. I put a little bit too much tint in there, but uh, it, it turned out it's fine, you know, because I have enough clear to, uh, to spread it out and, and uh, lighten it up. So that's, that's no problem. And I'm taking my spatula and I'm getting all the resin out that I can, scooping it out there really well and taking my paper towel and then wiping the rest of it off that I, that I you know, can't, can't use. So then I, <clears throat> then what I'm doing is, um, here's the clear. And um, again, pouring that down and uh, I'm going to be mixing all of this side to side with my hands. I have two sets of gloves on so that when I'm done spreading it out with my hands, I can take the outer pair off and then I can go right to my heat gun, which I use next. So. I'm just trying to be as, as, as efficient as I can because you only have a certain uh, amount of time to work with when you're using resin. I think the outside is 45 minutes, although I feel like that's pushing it. But so I try to get it done for 30, 35 minutes uh, before it starts to harden and becomes a little more difficult to work with. So heat will start the cure process. The resin needs the heat, likes the heat, I guess, to cure. And the room that I'm in, my studio is nice and warm, not too hot, but it's warm. I have my plastic apron on, I have my respirator on, I have my glasses on, which act as goggles as well, protect my eyes. Um, what else? Of course, my gloves. And... Um, so I'm, I'm well protected, especially the respirator. And, uh, and, I'm, and it's warm. <laughs> so 
as the as the time you know I'm rushing against the clock trying to take my time but still trying to work quick as quick as I can I know what my goal is so there's no time wasted there and um but I'm sweating you know I mean I'm starting to sweat so all this time I'm thinking I wish I had a headband on <laughs> so keep that in mind uh, headbands uh, headbands save you a lot of trouble <laughs> so Okay, so I'm pulling the gloves off, ready to go pick up my heat gun, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move the the resin around and blend it together as best I can, as much as I can. Now, when you're gonna apply heat to resin, you're also beginning, from what I understand and what I've read and and uh, have learned, that you're already you're starting your curing process just by applying heat itself. So. I want it warm enough that it's, I'm going to be able to move the paint around, but I don't want to thicken it to, you know, work against myself. So I'm pushing the paint off the sides of the board so that uh, I have it all full coverage. Uh, I do that first to make sure that it's all even. Parts that, I'm, you know, my hands may have missed, did miss. And um, doing that first. So I'm moving the heat gun around. Uh, at this point, I'm um, I'm probably adjusting the heat. Sorry about that, but you got a good shot of the attachment that I'm using. I think at this point I'm trying. Oh yes, I wanted to see if my husband's gun would work any better. So I'm about to to come down with a different gun. Here it is. Okay, this was a, a this was a bust. This didn't work. I couldn't get, I couldn't take the attachment off the other gun. I thought maybe the fan would be higher on his, but it's not. It wasn't, and I really just wasted time. You know, it didn't do much. It it did push some of the paint off. Um, I'm sorry, some of the resin off the edges, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't help me as far as blending the paint or you know, moving the paint into each other because it didn't have the attachment. And as I said, it was too hard to take take it off and put it on here. So in a, in a few seconds, I, I pretty much give up on this. There I go, and I, I put it uh, away safely because it's warm, very warm. And I get my other gun, which I pull up. I'm adjusting the heat down. And uh, sorry about that wiggling, too. Um, <clears throat> so... Um, so I'm getting it ready again because now I'm now I'm really working against the clock. Okay, so the the resin is starting to get thick, and I'm starting to panic, and I'm sweating, and it's hot in there, and, and all that, all that uh, gear I'm under, which is critical. But uh, still, it can get pretty warm, it can get pretty hot. Sorry about my back there. Um, I'm 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 moving it, um, as you can see. I'm moving it um, up and down, not not across, but up and down, um, with so that I can move the quote uh, uh, watery, you know, the watery effect, the waves, gentle rolling kind of waves there, with no surf, just to uh, the, the the variations in the color of the water, just so I can blend blend them together so it's soft, nice and soft, and um, just just enough to give it uh, the effect that I want. And um, so I'm going, I'm gonna be going, pushing it down, pushing it up, and trying, and knowing this whole time while I'm doing this that the heat itself is um, making the resin cure so uh that's just that's just how you know that's just a fact of something you have to deal with uh if anybody can give any advice on that i would be happy to uh to listen to it i maybe next time i will uh, i'll try a blow dryer. I think I did try it one time and it didn't really work out it was too it was too much so I'm just going up and down and and up and down and I would fast forward through this, but um, I don't know how to do that. So feel free to do that. I think you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. 
I'm pushing the paint off. I'm trying to make it as, ev as even as I can. I'm trying to blend those colors in as best as I can so that uh, I have a nice soft effect, watery effect, and sort of like the, the, the beachy white sand going with a steep decline into some nice deep blue water. So I just, um, that's all I'm trying to achieve here at this point. And uh, there's only one way to do that, and that's just to be patient and uh, try not to panic and do the best that you can and understand that, you know, if, if you, you know, start to get, uh, you know, run out of time, just don't panic. Um, now, the key gun is not only moving the paint around, like I said, but it's also um, popping, popping those bubbles. There's a lot, like I said, but um, I do get them all out eventually, but not with the heat gun. I have to take my torch out once I'm done blending these the way that I want, which is coming up soon. I'm almost done with that part. I think I smoothed a few things out with my hands that you don't see here, but um, I'm pretty happy when I'm done. Well, okay, so now I have the torch gun out, and this is... Funny enough, it's in slow motion. I Don't ask me how I did that, I don't have a clue. But I, I have a good angle of light as the light's coming in behind me. I can see where the bubbles are. They're, they're small, but I can see the clusters all over the, the, paint, the resin painting. And they're coming, out, they're coming out easily enough. But I don't have my torch flame. I have it uh, higher here than I do adjust it down. Because again, I know that I'm, I don't want to burn the resin at this point. It's getting, it's getting thicker and thicker. And if I push it, I'm going to end up burning it. And I don't know if you've ever done that, but it's not fun. It, I've, I was able to fix it the couple times that I did it, but I learned my lesson. So I think here is where I did adjust it down, and now now it's regular speed, and I'm I'm just I'm going quick. You can see that I'm I'm moving the gun around as quick as I can, so I'm not staying in one place too long, thereby uh, burning it, or, you know, hurting the resin in any way. Going as fast as I can, I, I keep I keep looking down at an angle. You know, level with the with the resin painting as level as I can with my eyes to try to see anywhere that there's bubbles, anywhere that there's lint, anywhere that there's dust, anywhere that you know something has landed into the painting, and we all know what that's like. So I keep. Um, I did not have my tweezers. You can see me smoothing the. Um, smoothing the bottoms and taking the resin off with uh, a stick and, and even in my fingers. So I have a, I guess that's called a skewer, uh, a shish kebab, I think is what it's called, stick. And I'm going through the, you know, I'm, go, I'm eyeballing it and I'm going through it and I'm picking out parts of lint and dust that don't get burned off by the torch or by, uh, you know, by the flame. By the torch, it, it it's some it'll just stubbornly just sit there, and uh, so you have to very gently either take a very fine point of uh, tweez pointed tweezers or the skewer and just very gently try to scoop that up. Okay, here it is, all done, cured. This is the next day. This is today. Uh, I'm trying to take pictures without too much reflection, but it's kind of hard to do. Um, but I'm really very, very happy with this. Uh, it's, uh, I don't have to do a second coat. I like the way it came out. Very, very little dust. Barely, you can't see it. It's going to be up high um, on a wall, but even if it wasn't, I'd be happy. So let's get into the resin drippings. There weren't that many, but you can see here, I'm going to reuse these. And even though they're on um, a couple of them on a paper towel, I'm going to cut the paper towel off and use them. And this is a box, this is the box that I keep them in. So there you go. This is the box. I have a bunch in here. You can't see too well. But I also keep uh, my drippings from my acrylic pores too. And I have an idea of what I want to use them with. 
or four, but that's for another video. Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate you watching this and um, talk soon, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye. I meant to mention this real quick, guys. I propped uh, some boxes up and a, uh, I put a piece of wood over them, on laying on top of them so that it was covering the resin painting, thereby stopping any dust from getting in there.